All righty, it is five o'clock. Welcome to the first Middlesex Select Board of 2024, right? Tuesday, January 6th. And wow. yes, and we have Peter, our board member, our fellow board member visiting on Zoom, which is why I am chairing. Um, and we have some guests here. We have George Longnecker, we have Jeff Price, we have Steve, Shelley, and Samantha, and what is your name? Zara Vincent. Zara, okay, thanks, from the budget committee. Yes. Yeah, and Zara from the budget committee, and Eric from the town. Um, okay. Yes. What is, so how come it says Tuesday on the 6th? I don't know, it's today not the 6th? Today's the 9th. Okay, it's the 9th. Sorry, Sarah, can you change that to the 9th? Thank you no. for recognizing that <laughs> that date. I wouldn't have known. But uh, let's see. Reviewing a met. Okay, sorry. Approving the minutes of December nineteenth, twenty twenty three regular select board meeting. Um, we had Peter, me, Randy, and Vic at that meeting. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the minutes of the December nineteenth, twenty twenty three meeting. Okay. In a second. Any discussion? Okay. okay. Randy, sorry. sorry. Uh, okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes from December 19th, say aye. 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 And then we're going to review, amend, and approve the agenda for Janu January 9th, 2024. Uh, action likely. So what are the amendments, Sarah? Um, well, I did amend the amended agenda, but I didn't amend the date, so that was stupid. But okay. The, um, I don't have anything to on the amended agenda okay. of the EWP grant application, honey being there is supposed to be designated emergency shelter coordinator. That's all I have. Okay. Already, is there a motion? I think the motion that we. Uh... That uh, improved the agenda for January 9th. Look at I from January 4th. Oh, God. Okay. What's that? Look? Nothing. Okay. Any seconds for that? Randy I seconds will. it. All right. All those in favor of today's agenda say aye. 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 Ready? Okay. So we are right on schedule for formally accepting Bridget Browning's resignation due to medical issues and appointing a replacement until March 5th. 2024 town meeting and we received a couple of um interest letters of interest one from jeff price and one from george longnecker and so um i would offer you the opportunity now to um introduce yourself tell us a little bit about yourself why you're interested in running and also if you can give us an idea of whether or not you would be interested in um uh, getting signatures, uh, which would need to be done like ASAP. Sarah, by the 15th. Is, by the 15th. I think you need, um, by January 29th. 29th. How many 15? signatures? Yeah. 14. You just need 15 signatures by 15. January 29th. Okay. 15 signatures by January 29th of Middlesex residents, um, to be put on the ballot for voting. Um, so I guess, Jeff, why don't we hear from you? I think we received your letter first. So thank you for your interest. Um, so, yeah, Jeff Price, I lived in Middlesex nearly my whole life, grew up here, moved away a little bit uh, for college, a few apartments with my now wife out of town, built a house in here in 2002, mainly for the school system, and we've been here since. Um, I just sat on the sidelines and not really know much about what goes on at this level, and I guess to be completely honest, complained about things I didn't understand and wasn't super happy with. So I figured now was the time to put my time where my complaining was and, and see if I could step in and, and help. And I think, um, you know, experience wise, almost 30 years in the insurance industry, I am the media claim as a union mutual. I oversee their operations as well. So lots of uh, engineering, construction, disaster recovery, finance, stuff. So, so I've got a couple of skills I can put to work here. Great. And thinking about the future, is this something, because it is coming up quite quickly, 
that you would consider running? Yeah, short time one, and I was hoping to at least get a meeting on my belt to see what it involved time wise, process wise. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I am interested. Yeah. So I would invite you to. Sorry. I didn't hear you, Jeff. Yes, interested. Okay. Okay. So I would invite you to stay for the meeting, um, so you can just kind of get a feel for how it rolls. <laughs> um, anything else that you want to add? Okay, questions from board members. Have you served on boards in the past? Uh, never a board like this. Okay. Probably work related type yeah. boards, but not the, yeah. in the community, you haven't served in a um, capacity. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Peter, you have any questions? No, nope, I'm all set. Thank you. Right. Thank you for your interest, Jeff. Um, Mr. Longnecker, you are up next. I'm George. Yes. Yeah, I've been on the budget committee twice since sort of uh, since 2013. We moved. My wife Cynthia and I moved here in 2011. Before that, I lived on in Marshfield. I was on the select board there for seven years. I'm also on the conservation commission here, and and the Wrightsville Rec District board. So I think I could I could come in 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 the interim and. Know what's going on with the budget, uh, the roads, uh, some of the financial emergencies and contingencies were expected. I worked at Vermont Pack where I was for 37 years and also at Norwich. So I'm already on the ballot for the budget committee, pretending to stay on it. I wouldn't. I serve in the interim to give us a smooth transition, not planning to run for another office. Okay, so you're not planning to run for the select board in planning. March. Okay. Glad to serve until time. Right. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Are there questions for George? Yes, I don't have a question, but I also brought my paperwork to run. Okay, all right, we can. Um, well, well, I was going to ask if there was anyone else here that was interested. So thank you. Um, any other questions for George? Oh, Liz, and Sarah, thanks. Uh, yeah, Sarah, did you say you're interested in the interim job, or are you interested in running, or are you interested in one or the other? I'm just need clarification for that. Uh, I, I was, I'm interested in running, so being on the March ballot. Okay, so not interested in years. interim. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Uh, any questions for George? Okay. Is there anyone in the audience who is interested in being appointed? So this is how it kind of works. When someone is um, leaves the select board in the middle of a term, the select board appoints a person to serve until the next election. This happened to happen very unfortunately um, and under no control from Bridget, um, it happened very close to the next election, um, which means that uh, we still want to appoint someone that would then have to run again. Um, and so, um, well, I'm sorry, if they wanted to stay yeah. on, if they want to stay on, they'd have to run again because their term technically ends at the end of, February. The appointed term. Uh, I'm sorry. The what? appointed term. Yeah, right. the appointed term, right. And can we clarify what the duration of Bridget's term yeah, what uh, is that? would look is like? Two? Is it two years left of a three-year term? Exactly. It's two years left of a three-year term? Okay. So um, so this, that if you were running, you would be committing to at least another two years. And then if you liked it, your next term would be three years. Unless you've switched with another board member, sometimes that happens to people switch their their terms. Um, so um, I guess my question to you is: Are you interested, Zara, in being potentially appointed now? Absolutely. I'm okay. Available. Okay. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what interests you in this position? Sure. Um, my name is Zara Vincent. I've lived in this town for 20 years. I'm a fifth generation Vermonter. I didn't move far from where I grew up, which was Waterbury. 
Um, and I've just recently gotten more involved in the local politics. I'm certainly a political junkie federally um, and just kind of learning the, uh, the more nitty gritty. I'm currently on the budget committee and um, would like to serve the town in any way that I can. Great. What is your, uh, what do you do for your professional work? So my profession has always been in um, television and uh, radio sales. So electronic and digital media. Okay. Vic met me when I worked for the point. Uh, and are you also running for the budget? I'm also running for the budget committee okay. for a two-year term. Okay, are there any questions for Zara, Vincent? Peter, any questions? No, I, I do have a question for George, though. I, I could not quite understand whether he said he was interested in running for the position. No, I said I'd do it until town meeting day. Okay, thank you, George. Zara's been great on the budget. I think we're both good candidates. Okay. She's willing to step in and take this. Okay. I think that'd be great. Is there anyone else in the audience who is interested in being appointed? No, hearing none. Okay, so at this time, um, we actually talk about it as a board. We do this, it's not in executive sessions, so everybody gets to hear the conversations. Um, and I believe we have um, three highly qualified candidates. Um, I personally would um, say probably since George isn't interested in running again, that we would be considering the two candidates who possibly are interested. Um, Zara has indicated that she has uh, is plans to be put on the ballot um, for March. Uh, Jeff has indicated that he's um, he's open to that and he'd like to kind of see um, how the um, how the board works and whether or not it's something that he'd uh, be interested in doing. So is there discussion that people want to have about the pros and cons of either? I mean, frankly, you know, I would say from a standpoint of, um, you know, your commitment and um, an interest, you're both equally qualified in different ways, right? I mean, it's, you, you come with different backgrounds, so you come with different strengths. What I think is a good thing about our board is that we tend to be um, fairly diverse in terms of our, our, um, our work backgrounds and what we contribute to the, the conversation. Um, so it's handy to have that, um, you know, you know, just people who have come with different expertise to be able to weigh in on things like, you know, Jeff may be able to weigh in on things around the town hall, for example, if we're going to be doing a town hall renovation. Um, and, you know, Zara's on the budget committee already and, and understands a lot of what's going on. So she brings that strength. So I would say, between the two of you, um, we have some, you know, extremely qualified candidates that would be, I think, um, uh, great for the board. Um, so I would say, you know, I'd like to hear from everybody else to see what they have to say. Yeah, I agree. Um, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just going to make the general comment that it's it's very nice that we have three people interested in the short term and two people interested in the short term and the long term. It isn't always that we uh, have choices to make when it comes to appointing people. So I really appreciate uh, the interest of all, all three folks, very much so. Yes, Vic. Um, yeah, of course. Um, whether you know whether, whether you're uh, whoever's appointed tonight is still they still have the opportunity to run. They but, still have the opportunity to yes exactly that thank clear, you. That's the yep. yep yeah yeah that's all yep. I'm not. And the other thing is that uh, that is good is um, is great is the interest of younger people. Yes, that is a big big plus. I mean. Uh, thank you. Peter and I are the old guys here now, so. Getting older every minute, Vic. That's right. And um, 
you know, I think it, it does a great, it's a, you know, not that you guys are old, but it's great to have, Getting there. it's great to have people with, uh, with uh, a diverse experience and, uh, and, and being younger and having, uh, you know, come from a, uh, a different generation. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's very good. I like that. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Um, I've said for a long time, this town needs more active participants. Um, you know, my involvement within the budget committee or within the select board uh, came from a place much like you, Jeff, where, you know, I sat back and I was looking and not understanding always what happens here at this level and complaining about some of the things you see from the outside. I will say you get a different perspective when you're sitting here having some of these conversations and, and um, looking at the information as, as this board looks at it. So uh, thank you both for coming out. Uh, George, you as well. I, like Liz, um, you know, I think my interest is supporting those that are interested more long term. So, um, you know, recognizing that that you have plenty of uh, qualifications and credentials. I think for me, um, I think I would I would be more interested in looking at uh, trying to um, get somebody in here and give them a taste of what's to come to make sure that for the long term they're making the right decision and signing up because it does take some effort. Um, you know, time is is important to all of us and people's capacity uh, is extremely important. Um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, for me, uh, just seeing people that are that are interested in being active is extremely, extremely important. And I applaud both of you, all three of you at this point, but um, yeah. Basically, what I've what I've got to say. Uh, and I'll just mention in terms of like the commitment. Um, Randy was touching on this a little bit. Um, the, you know, we are scheduled for usually two meetings a month. Sometimes it's especially during COVID and everything. It became almost weekly that we were meeting. So there is a there is a level of commitment to this. We get a huge amount of support from Sarah and Dorinda. Um, on an administrative level, which kind of takes some of the burden away from board members that other towns don't necessarily have that that uh, privilege of having two really competent people um, to kind of do things like pull these paperworks together and make sure, you know, help with the agenda and things like that. So, um, you know, I think um, that's, a, that's a plus in terms of there's not a lot of... Um, side things going on, like side subcommittees. I am working on, for example, the town hall, um, a renovation and some funding that's available um, for work on the town hall. Um, so that's sort of a side thing that I'm doing, which is actually why I'm running again, so that I can kind of finish that and then hopefully not run again after that, but <laughs> make it a dozen years instead of 10. Um, so, um, and you know, the, it's also good to have people in person now as opposed to Zoom. We really do prefer that, um, although you can Zoom in, which is nice. Um, and every town meeting, uh, the day, the meeting after town meeting is when we sort of set who's going to chair, who's our timing of the meetings. But right now they've been at five um, for historic, as long as I've been here. They've always been at five. So you want to make sure that you're all like this is you're able to do that. Um, to be available um, at that time for for uh, for week for work days. Um, so you know, I don't. I, I think at this point, um, unless you guys, do you have any more questions? Either one of you? Yes, sir. I do have one thing sure. to say, and that is that I'm I am traveling the months of February and March of this year. So I, while I could zoom in, I would not be available in person. Okay, but you could zoom in. Okay. Yep. Um, Jeff, do you have any more questions or comments? Think of. Okay, great. So I guess at this point, I'm looking for um, a, a nomination. Um, yes, Victor. I would nominate Jeff. 
Okay. Is there a second for nominating Jeff? Okay. Second. Peter. Okay. Uh, Peter seconded. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. I will nominate Zara. Uh, Vincent. Are there any seconds? Randy seconded it. Okay. So we have two nominations. <laughs> this is where it comes down. And I want you guys both to know, truly, this is, um, we are so grateful that both of you, three of you came out. Um, this is, you know, one of these things where if we had two positions, it would be filled, right? And so, but we have to choose one person. So, yes. As long as we're discussing that, still yeah. discuss, right? Yeah. Yeah, either one, whoever whoever isn't chosen still has the opportunity yes. again to come to the last two meetings would be welcome and and uh, and, um, and and that is true because I think what would end up happening is if whoever we nominated and they decided to run and put their name on the ballot and the other person also put, put their name on the ballot there would be a race against two people. And it would probably be, if you, if, were, if it worked out that way, it would be the two of you, unless there was a, another candidate. Can you have well, a the, theoretically, theoretically, they could enter a race for any of the open slots. Yes, for any of the open right. slots, exactly, yeah. Like my slot is open right now, so you can run against me. You can also run against Peter Hood. Um, and so, Peter, you're a three-year term or a two-year term? I think you're three. three and I'm a two-year term. Um, so that being said, um, we have two nominations. Um, all those in favor of Jeff Price, say aye. 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 Okay. All those in favor of, so the three ayes. All those in favor of Zara, say aye. And you can theoretically vote more than once? I don't think so. No, you can't. Aye. Okay, and the eyes for Jeff Price have it. Welcome, Jeff Price, till March 4th. Is that right? Sarah, March 4th? 7 p.m., March 5th. 7 p.m., March 5th. And I would suggest that um, regardless of whether or not you think you're going to run again, Jeff, that tonight you have a body of many people from Middlesex so that you should, Sarah could print out a signature form for you to start getting signatures. <laughs> well, also I have more important than both of them. <laughs> the next X number of Okay. Yep. Thanks. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Sarah, for thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So just to be just to be clear, Jeff's term should be effective immediately so he can participate in the meeting. Yeah, I think so. Jeff, you're going to participate starting right now. You're going to pull up a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and Sara, I welcome you to stay. Um, oh, of course. Yeah, yes. if, believe yes. me, there's no hard feelings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want everybody to know if you have petitions circulating, there has been a change of law. You can sign petitions for more than one person for the same office. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Wait, what? I didn't realize that people are running. Couldn't... Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. You know, it used to be before the change in law, you could only sign for their jack lists. For the two and a three year term, you can only sign one. I yeah. see. You have a three-year term, a two-year term, and a two out of three years. Okay, so now you can sign as many petitions as you can. Thank you, Brady. So you might want to share because it makes you look just tall. Welcome. Yes, welcome. Thank you. And um, Sarah, do you have some paperwork yeah, I can get for him? Well, like a packet. I think I, I think I put one over there. George has got his hands on. George is George has got underneath Budget, agenda, printed copy. Does anyone else need a copy of the budget? Okay, so I have mine on the computer if someone needed an extra. You have that. Everybody else is all set. All righty. Well, thank you, everybody. I thought that went well.
Moving on to our next agenda, the fiscal year 2025 budget workshop. Reviewing the drafted fiscal year 2025 budget, budget committee likely to attend. We have Mark and Zara and Randy, and I thought, oh, George. George. Um, here. Uh, Hold on. Yeah. That motion should have had you. You got to pass a motion to formally. Oh, I'm sorry. Bridget yeah. Browning. Person. Yes. Okay. Could we? Could there be a motion to formally accept Bridget Browning's resignation? I move that we. Go ahead, man. I move that we accept Bridget formally. Accept Bridget Brown. Okay. Thank you. Second. And Vic seconds it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, okay. So, and and part of this is a discussion to um, how we're going to allocate the child care tax, and there's action possible. So, who would like to take the lead on this? I can explain what it is. It's something okay. that will begin on July first. And it's um, as part of your payroll taxes, and that we have to against every um, dollar we have to tax 0.44 percent. Um, but the select board needs to decide. There's two ways to do it: either the town can absorb the entire 0.44 percent, or they can allocate. 0.33% to the um, to the town and 0.11% to the employee. There's no other no other choice. No other choice. Interesting. Oh, so it's not somewhere it's not from that yeah. 0.33 up. It's the okay. Um, so as from what I understood. So do we have an idea of how much that's going to be? Not... Forty four dollars on every ten thousand dollars of salary. Forty-four dollars and every ten thousand. Yeah. Okay. I think we run three hundred thousand dollars in salary for those affected because it's it's not for anybody that's appointed uh, or elected. It's just for regular uh, staff. So uh, I put it into our budget numbers at the full point four four percent, and it comes in just under two thousand dollars for the budgeted hours. Okay. And so our suggestion is either we pay all that 2000 or we put the 0.11. The point one one. I think we just paid. That's my opinion. That, and the, in general, most of the town, because 0.11 is such a small percentage when you take it out, most towns are just doing the full four percent wouldn't it make more administration to charge everybody? To no, because it all it's all computerized. It's just like any tax on the payroll system. Um, but it's you know you're talking really a small amount. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, Peter, um, yeah. it is true that we can reconsider this every year how we do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if we decide. We decide today that we're going to pay the whole amount. But my only concern is there's been a lot of chatter that this number is going to radically ramp up. And, you know, at some point in time, it might make sense to have the employees contribute. But I agree right now for $2,000, um, I think it makes sense for the town to suck it up. Randy, Vic, or um, Jeff, any thoughts? I'm supportive of that. Okay. I agree. Okay, Jeff, supportive. Play the devil's advocate. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not really. I agree, it's going to be 2000 but I think uh, that this is kind of forced on the whole state. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's at some point, like Peter said, but at some point, I think the more people we get involved in it, the more, if there's going to be a pushback, the more pushback there would be. It would give, I mean, I think if, if we pay it, it's just under the table and nobody, nobody's really going to say too much. No. Or, you mean the employees? No, the employees or, or the, you know, which are the taxpayers of the city. So the only other, the only other thing I'd say about this, and, you know, I'm just 
thinking about it this afternoon is if there was a way, and believe me, I understand it doesn't make sense and you'd never collect enough money and it wouldn't work. But if the people who were benefiting from this child care were asked to contribute, it's one thing. But just because somebody happens to be an employee of the town doesn't necessarily mean that they have kids or that they have kids that need child care. So uh, to me, and I, I understand what you're saying, what you're saying, Victor, but uh, you know, it's like we all pay school tax, whether or not we have we have uh, we have kids in the school. I think it's a I think it's a community obligation, and hopefully, our legislature, hard to believe though it might seem, will control this expense and it won't grow too much. But we have the option to review it as long as we have the option to review it every year. I'm supportive of having the town do it this year, next year. Does the bid budget committee have any comments or thoughts? Okay. How much does this change our increase? <laughs> it's already in the last budget report we got. Okay. All right. So before we uh we would have to make a motion on that, Sarah. Yeah, I need it in the records how you're okay. You want me to do we want to vote on that right now or let's talk about the budget first before we do that? Since that was really the first line item. Okay. I vote on that separate okay. from the budget. Yeah, let's okay. do it now so we don't forget. Okay. Who has a motion to I'll make the motion, Peter for okay? Peter's making the motion that the town will pay for the entire 0.44% of the child care tax. Um is there a second? Okay, Vic seconds. All right, all those in favor of the town paying for that? Aye. On that motion, aye. aye. The ayes have it, Sarah. All right, so now we're going to look at the drafted fiscal year 2025 budget and what would the budget committee like to talk about? Mark, Mark you wanna go ahead? So I'm hoping folks got the copy of our recommendation we sent out last Friday. We had a meeting last Thursday, sharpened our pencils, and came up with some recommendations for cuts that would get the fiscal year 25 budget before special articles under 10%. So I'm hoping if folks have access to that, they can take a look at it and provide some feedback. Okay. I've got a call. Oh, yeah, here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's what you said. That's what Mark is. Mark, would you highlight where those? You don't, you don't have anything. So there was a Word okay. document sent out. I thought it. Is it here You're, in our? Package? Are you printing it now, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. okay. It's not out here in these okay. packets, but. Um, okay, that has the recommendation. Yeah. So okay. ba basically, what this is, and and Sarah's printing this off now for everybody, but. Um, Mark, if you don't mind, if I just run through this, go right ahead. Um, let's just wait for her. Okay. Hi, Phil. Well, it's welcome. All right. <laughs> Good. How are you? Good. So maybe we should rename that. Yes, absolutely. Right to the prime pen over there. Yes. It's yes. Um, so the recommendation from the uh, budget committee, um, and I'm just going to run through these <laughs> fairly quickly and give a little explanation as to what the rationale behind it was. Um, line 56 computer maintenance, um, currently a $40,000 line item, which uh, included email conversion and annual support fees for our existing contract with RB Technologies. Um, and the recommendation was to reduce this $40,000 by $10,000. We received an estimate for $17,000 to do an email conversion for 14 licenses um, and the thought of the budget committee, based on feedback that we've had from folks that we've talked to, 
um, is that the cost of that, or the estimate of that seventeen thousand dollars for those for that email conversion um, was astronomical, and uh, everybody that we've talked to felt like with a, with some shopping we should be able to pare that down. Um, uh, consultant fees, line fifty seven. Um, this uh, was to for a hundred hours of uh, consulting time or support time for the listers, um, and the reduction amount was uh, forty five hundred dollars. Moving that from a hundred hours to seventy hours. Um, the line item ninety seven. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm, I don't have I'm not yeah, okay. the new amounts right there, but uh, line item 97, uh, fire department stipends. Um, we've looked at historical uh, cost structure there um, of historical costs and then understanding that we've had a shift in cost structure. Um, we've recommended, I've talked with Eric um, about how busy last year was knowing that this is a demand service and you can never actually know what that service is going to be required to supply. Um, but we've been at the eleven to twelve thousand dollar mark for the past couple of years after the cost structure change with an average um, activity based on the feedback from Eric. So we felt like moving that from eighteen thousand uh, dollars down three thousand dollars to fifteen um, would be appropriate. Um, Line item 122, um, road gravel. Um, the thought here was that, you know, we've, we've done a tremendous amount of work with the storm recovery, um, understanding that there's still other work to do that hasn't been impacted by the storm. Um, but we felt like this was an area that um, we could cut. Uh, the recommendation was moving $10,000 out of that um, $50,000, making that $40,000. Um, culverts, line item 186. Again, um, the rationale was, and looks like Mark did a little bit of homework here. Um, I think 180 culverts already replaced through the flooding. Um, and we assume that the risk of reduce spending next year um, could be tolerated. Um, we talked about the stockpile of culverts that we had at one point and what the budget uh, carried through those years allowed us to create that stockpile. So this is an area that we felt like um, could be reduced by $5,000. Um, and then line item 263, and this has been a, a Excuse me, Randy. So what does what does that leave the culvert at after five five thousand out? I think it brings it down to nine thousand. I think it was fourteen thousand, Peter. Thank you. Yeah, it was fourteen. Thank you, Randy. Um, so two sixty three, and this this. Paper says town hall building fund, but it really should be uh, town building fund. Um, so there was a removal of $10,000 here. Um, we had originally included $30,000 uh, additional over and above what uh, historically has been allocated to this line item for uh, elevator repairs. Um, and basically it would suspend the annual allocation of the $10,000 to the, to the building fund um, with the expectation that there would be some work coming up with the town hall, a study that's going on and whatnot, but still carry um, the money for elevator repairs if that renovation was not to move forward or we needed to do something before we got there. Um, Mark, you wanna? Chime in if I missed anything. Well, you pretty much covered it, Randy. The only uh, question I have is just to get some clarity on the elevator repairs. I know 
in the capital asset inventory when it was created in the summer of 2021, the elevator repair of 30,000 was slaughtered for fiscal year 2025. And it said it was based on an estimate, I think that the town clerk got. And I'm, I'm unsure what happens to the elevator as part of the renovation proposal. Is it a repair of that elevator or is it a replacement of that elevator? Does anybody know? I believe it's a replacement. So I, I heard Peter say it's a replacement. Yeah, no, like the replacement and relocation, because right now you can't even uh, okay. wheelchair. Okay, um, so a couple other questions based on that then. Um, are we at any risk of legal issues with the state of the elevator? I'm just unsure what's, is it is it operational today? I, barely, I think I, barely, barely operational. Okay, and it's not ADA compliant, that's what I'm hearing? Definitely not. Well, so, before we start making these blanket statements, the uh, this was surveyed by a um, an ADA adjacent a nonprofit, which is hired by the state to go through and make recommendations about lifts. And we are like a lot of town halls. I'll make this brief. A lot of communities got grants in 2000 to build lifts. We're all in the same boat. We're all kind of got lifts at this stage in the game. So while it found the lift is insufficient. It did not find it was defunct, but it does definitely raise issues. I can send so, you that report. Okay, that would be great. So the other the other point is when it was put on the list in 2021, I mean, I'm assuming everybody knew the elevator had issues back then. Has it gotten worse in the two or three years since? No, it's just held stable. There, there are some there are some basic, basic problems that cannot be repaired by repairs, because for reasons that no one in my generation of being a town clerk can understand, the well, one of the well caps is right there by the door, so you can't open the door. So oh, you'd okay. have to remove it. So it's an but obstruction. Not, okay. Not just, not just a, you know, gussy up the elevator. We've got major structural problems. So it doesn't sound like if a Vermont building inspector came in tomorrow, that they have any concerns about shutting us down because our elevator doesn't work great. I've never heard of such a thing happening. Do we have Vermont building inspectors? I'm just I'm just throwing that out. I'm trying to understand if we have any legal exposure to an elevator that doesn't work exactly right. So Mark, the, the legal exposure would be someone wants to use the elevator, they can't use it, they get upset and come after us for failing to comply with with ADA. And, you know, is there some risk of that out there? Maybe, potentially. Um, but, you know, I don't lie awake at night worrying about that, but that probably is the biggest single risk. Okay. I, don't think, I don't think the state of Vermont would ever tell us that yep. we couldn't use our town hall because we didn't have... Uh, because the elevator wasn't functioning correctly. But who knows what could happen? Right. The bottom line is, it's it's an issue that we have been pushing down the road for a long time. I yep. mean, we've known it's a problem. It's been a problem for years and years and years. And it always seems it always fails on town meeting day. And, you know, we haven't had tremendous demand for it, but we've had some demand for it. So it's something we need to deal with, definitely. No yeah, matter whether we go ahead with the with the other renovation or whether we uh right. The only reason I'm asking these questions, Peter, is I'm just trying to understand the cost benefit of of putting thirty thousand to elevator repair when we're gonna replace it in who knows how many years. That's all. Well, there's there's the whole question, and that enters into this whole town hall renovation issue. Um so, yeah, I mean, we've been putting that number in there for some years as kind of a plug number, feeling that the, the ax was about to fall and we were going to have to do it. And uh, we haven't had to do it, but that's why that number is in there, because we're scared someday 
the mm -hmm. elevator repair people are going to come and say, we are putting, you know, like they put a, a red tag on a boiler when you can no longer use it. Well, they'll, they'll shut that elevator down and say, you okay. cannot use it. Well, and I think, you know, I can speak for the reason that I asked it to be attached to the town uh, building fund was that if it's in there and the town voters decide to move forward with a renovation project, we can then step back and look at whether or not the investment to the elevator makes sense. But if they don't, if if the town comes back and says, we're not moving forward with this renovation project, we've got to do something there. So the thought was that if we moved forward with the renovation project, then if it's in the town building fund, it could essentially go towards the renovation project, which the elevator then is being replaced. So we're going to have to pay for it somewhere. Right. Okay. So was that, that's it on the, yeah. Okay. Are there any questions for Randy or other budget so committees about that? Where does that leave our budget before special articles after those cuts? 9.2%. I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. 9.2%. And what's the amount? Uh, I haven't got that in front of me. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. That's fine. Peter? No, go ahead. 42,500. <laughs> Is the difference, Is right? Recommended. It's a recommended cut. He's, I think he's asking what is, is the total budget line item at the end. Okay. Oh, it's fine. I don't, yeah. It, it's whatever, is this? So Randy has it. Uh, well, I did. It would be, uh, be, it would be the 197723 no. minus 42. No, no it would be no, I, I didn't put any of these numbers in. No, there. I said, but minus 42. No, minus. 1972, 1, 1, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that minus 42,000. Yeah, okay. 425. Okay. So is this a, a decrease of 9.2% or an increase of 9.2% for the budget? Increase. Increase. And who was that? Yeah, who asked that question? My name's Charlie Cook, COOK. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie Cook. Yep. Uh, just would remind guests that when you want to talk, please address the chair. At this time, the acting chair, Liz Sharp, and say we'd like to have ask the question. Okay. So you want me to just ask Liz Sharp before asking? No, you just say, can I ask a question of the chair? It's fine. Okay. It just wasn't clear when you guys were saying okay. that point. Um, are there any other questions? Yes, Brenda. I'd like to speak to a few of these. Okay. Items. Um, as far as cutting ten thousand dollars from the email, um, I feel very strongly that I my email does not work correctly. Has not worked correctly for at least six months. Um, I think that to be out shopping new IT people the day, the week we're trying to do a budget is not the time to be cutting that money item. Um, maybe you take it out of the server, which we know we're not going to get for a while, but, and I'm not saying that this is the correct, you know, that we have to enter into the agreement with RB, but I think we should budget for this. And then if we save money at the end, so be it. Um, but I think this is a very important item on the agenda. Um, so I just. And I, based on some of the conversation, sorry, can I, Go ahead. Yep. Can I address that? Uh, based on some of the conversations that we've, we've had with some IT folks is we could do with, with Spending much less on any type of server product if we were if we did have that conversion taking place. Theoretically, the conversion could cost less and the server could cost less. But to your point, we could move that cut to the server line item and leave the full amount for the for the email conversion in there. Um, if that's what people feel more comfortable with, because I think I think the savings can be realized. 
um, you know, once we make that email conversion. Regardless of who our provider is. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my understanding. So moving we don't need to... as as robust of a server, yeah, if I you see. will, if we move those services. Is the server well, in... or we go to the cloud, don't forget that one. Right. Well, that's what I'm talking about with the email migration and, and everything else too. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Is the server in the capital budget? Is it somewhere uh, here? We it have line of forty five, isn't it? Oh, line item oh, forty five yeah. isn't it? Forty five, yeah. Yep. That's fine. Yes. That sounds good. That's so you're saying change that to 10. And leave the, and leave email, the, conversion alone, the email conversion. Which at 40. Which was at 40. Okay. So that, that just a reminder, good. that 40 is not just the email conversion. That's our annual support budget okay, as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's line uh, 44. And it's 45. I'm sorry, 45 and yeah. called what? Equipment, uh, equipment purchase. That's under equipment purchase? Yeah, line 45. Right. Does that work for you, Dorinda? I just, I don't care where you make the cut. <laughs> I yeah. just want to make sure <laughs> that it's clear yeah. that we are on top of this now. Um, yeah, I think it's very important. Okay, great. So how much are we cutting out of that? 45. 10K. 10K. To make it 10 total. Yeah. It um, was 20. The it next 20. one is the consultant fees. Um, that was originally when it was submitted to me by the listers was for 200 hours. We cut it back to 100 hours before we ever sat down and presented it to the budget. Um, so this is their only source of calling NEMRIC and asking them for any kind of support. I don't know if Shelly, being a lister, wants to speak to it or not, but I think you, you know, I think it's $150 an hour yeah. for anything over a 10 minute conversation. So, um, how much did we spend last year or this year? It's a new, it's a new line, right? Because we were not receiving that same support. Well, They're doing other things that we have in other line items within member, but this is this is for support over and above the services that they've been providing to us, correct? Go ahead, Charlie. Well, what happened is Vermont High took over what we we were in the contract with them and we were using their system. Well, we're still using their system to communicate with Vermont High because the state system took over. So now anything that we ask them for, we're gonna get charged for. Where before I think some of it was included. Okay. And we don't call them that often. So I don't see a problem. Um, the other lister wanted the 200 hours. Um, we used to go to the district of Biden, the state, which is free first. Okay. But if we do need them, we need them because it's their system. Are we keeping anything in it? Right. 70 hours oh. moved from 100 is what. So do you feel they can cut it another 30 I, hours? I, I think 70 is fine. You think you're going to be fine? Yeah. Okay. Just have to, I just wanted to. I would, also say right? you, I would also say that if you had to use more than 70, you shouldn't be shy to do it. Right. And then we just go over budget on that. Yeah, that I just break their system and then you got to come fix it. You know, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, if you're able to get the answers before calling them, okay, that's, that's great. Yeah. Thank you, Shelly, for that information. And the only other comment, which is on the road gravel, um, that we could use ARPA money. I want everybody to be aware. We have used ARPA money for every conversation that has come up. We currently don't have a dime of ARPA money because we have spent it on this flood. And which is our bigger part of the conversation tonight of making sure that we don't put the town in a position where we have no cushion. And I feel every time we do a cut, that's what we're doing. Yeah. But, yes, yes, George. Uh, do you feel that? Uh, we shouldn't make this cut then, or should we break No, it? I just feel that um, 
the reason we do where we've been able to only have to borrow 1.5 million is because we did have the fund downs we did have the um arpa funds so we by having that cushion it is saving us money in the long run um one of the good things that happened this year with the money because we came a little bit under budget under the for ending in june we were able to go out and buy the new rescue truck without incurring debt service. Um, the year before or two years ago, we did the same thing. We were able to buy the pickup truck without incurring debt service. And I think we're making a big mistake. Um, and we just made a comment that don't hesitate and go over budget. What do we do when we do the budget and we have no money? Well, I mean, when I made No, that I know what you meant, but I'm just saying that as a point that if we have no money left in our funds and we don't know how we're gonna get the FEMA money back, we don't know um, if we go out to the bond bank, which is another topic of conversation, that every bit of FEMA money that comes in has to be paid to them. So it doesn't come to us. That is a question I was talking with Randy about earlier. I don't know if now is the time to talk about it, but it is related to budget, I guess. Um, Randy um, told me that the money that comes, that, that the bond bank has to be paid first before we pay Community national. No. So what will happen is whatever we get from community, that's why they'll give us the loan to pay off community um, bank, community bank. But I don't think we're going to get. And we're not going to get think, the full amount. I don't think we're going to no, get I don't the think full we are amount. Either. So I think we're going to be left with owing community bank. Right. Um, I believe, and I'm not sure of this, I have to check on it, that hopefully we can pay off community bank. And then once that debt's been paid off, then we start paying off um, the bond bank. Right. And my question to Randy was, which was really to you, is um, if the FEMA money comes in and it's enough to um, pay off the... Could, could we... Like, can we pay ourselves first? No, I do not think so. We know that we can't pay ourselves back for what we, so we borrowed our own money, basically our reserve fund and our ARPA fund to pay people, to pay workers. And then we pay contractors. Yeah, to pay contractors. And then we also, because we had no more money and we also had our big school debt that we had to pay, we borrowed from Community National or Community Bank. Community Bank. Community Bank, we borrowed to 1.5 million. And that we had to use to continue to pay contractors, but also to pay our school loan because we had used that money already to pay the contractors. Yes, Vic? Uh, yeah, I'm just explaining finish, it. Just finish that up? Or? Yeah, yeah. And I then, have a question. Yeah, and so my question was that if FEMA gives us a big chunk of money, let's say they give us two and a half million dollars, who has to be paid first? Randy thought it was the bond bank, even before community bank. No. So the reason that we were taking out this bond bank, the loan, is um, to pay off our loan at community bank. So the intent is to pay them off first, but they don't. They expect any payment on um, the bond bank to go back to reduce their loan. Um, when I talked to the gentleman about it um, a while back, I told him that we had $2 million worth of, um, that we submitted to FEMA, $2 million worth of debt so far. And I said, but we only borrowed 1.5. And he said, I said, so that's what we're going to submit. And he says, well, I don't know if you'll be able to get that because you've only incurred 1.5 of debt. So that's what's making me worry. I said, well, if that's the case, maybe I should go out and borrow the 500, the other 500. Well, the, the thing is, they're not going to give us, the, and they're not going to give We're us. We're not going to get it all. Because everybody's applying. Everybody's applying. For it. Right. And 
So we'll get some piece of it. Maybe we'll get half. Uh, but but we haven't. How much have we actually borrowed from Community National? One point five. But how much is the um, three line of credit? Three million line of credit, and we borrowed one point five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say we get a million. That million goes and pays Community National. Right. From the bond, the bond bank gives us a million. We pay Community National. We still have five hundred thousand dollars outstanding. Then FEMA comes in and gives us. Let's say they give us one and a half million, right? They're holding back something. I don't know. They give us one and a half million. We still owe a million to the bond bank and we owe 500,000 to, to community. My question is, instead of paying the bond bank because it's a low interest rate, can we pay ourselves back before we pay them so that we can get our ARPA money back? Because right now she's right. We don't have $10,000 in ARPA money, right? Because we spent it. So can we pay ourselves back before, and then we wait for more FEMA money potentially before we pay off the bond? My understanding from him was we can't pay ourselves, but we can pay the debt we incurred for from community bank. Would, would the money that we paid ourselves be considered an interfund loan within the municipality? If, so if we put it... The reason I ask that is because when it talks about the flow of funds, I just went back to the right. to the webinar that they put yeah. up that we attended, and I pulled the slides. Okay. And in here, underneath the flow of funds, it talks about um, uh, payoff of bank and or interfund loans, um, direct expense reimbursement considered upon request. Um, so I don't know like if that money that the town used would be, you know, considered an interfund loan because certainly of where the, it lived. Certainly the fund balance would not be, I wouldn't think, but the ARPA funds may be because we hadn't allocated that to anything yet. So that portion might be, but I find it hard to believe our fund balance would be considered a loan to ourselves. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe, I mean, you know, again, these these things are made like by regular people who also may not have thought through some of the things that they're doing. So there's a possibility that we could potentially. And I think that might be a question that we ask. From, you understand what I'm you do. I, I think know you what you're what I, I yeah. get entirely what you're saying. The problem is we and I guess we don't have to accept it once it's awarded, but tomorrow's the deadline yeah. for applying for this bond bank. And um, so I just want to, you know, I'm very concerned how we're going to manage yeah. our, all of our obligations, our regular yes. obligations. Vic had a comment. Yes, Vic. Okay. This is a, I don't know, is this concerned your regular, regular obligation? The, the fact that, uh, what is it called? Uh, what's FEMA call it? The, the, next, the next step in our... Um, Putting, putting out the contract. Uh, the bid process. Isn't the it? bid process. Well, what about, what about that money? You know, that's 2.6 million. Where that's, are we going to pay that? That's exactly right. That's the next, that's that's the the next, next hurdle. That's the next hurdle. Right. Well, shouldn't that be part of our thinking in this budget? It's on my list. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, I mean, that's we did talk about that a couple of meetings ago. We were like, right. we should be putting some percentage in of what we owe, what we know we're going to pay, have to pay for this, the 7%. Well, it's not even we just that, in my that. opinion. Right, it's, it's also... It's the principle of any loan, yeah. principle and interest of any loan that we feel like we're going to have to go secure yep. to make those, those repairs to the roads. So the $2.6 million dollars, plus anything that we have to move from the line of credit that's not covered by this. So, I mean, it could be $3 million for all we know. Um, but getting back to this $10,000 and whether we use ARPA funds, we don't have, we can drop $10,000 worth of credit. We just won't use it. We won't spend that money. Right. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying if the money's in the budget, you know, it's, it, I just feel that, you know, I hate to see us cut ourselves short in any area yeah. and then trying to recover those funds as well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we may not end up having to do that. I mean, but we didn't know the flood was going to happen. We don't know if we're going to get enough. 
Right. You know, so um, I just think there's a lot riding on this that we really need to address. And um, uh, yes, George. Yeah, maybe we have a budget committee trying too hard to make this look better by getting right. under 10%. Maybe well, that's not realistic. I understand where you guys are going with this, you know, and I'm not pretty, I, I love the budget committee. So, you know, I think you guys have, you know, really a lot of thoughts put into all of this. I'm looking at the bigger picture and yeah. Mark has a question or comment. So I just want to clarify a few things. We had a discussion at the last meeting about all the money related to the flood. And I thought we had consensus that we would treat that as separate from the fiscal year 25 operating budget, except for line item 29 or 28 and 29, which Durinda has included. So I don't know how we'll ever get to approval of a fiscal year 25 budget if we don't separate what we think our operating budget is going to be, and then figure out how we're going to finance or recover all the money we're spending on the roads. Because it's my recollection that that was a consensus we had at our last meeting, was we would treat these separately. Because the flood recovery is a one-off. It's not an annual budget thing. It's a one-off situation that we have to, we have to uh, explain to the voters. And if we have to bond it, if it's a worst case scenario, that's what we do. But that we would separate these two entities. Does anybody else have that recollection? Yes. yes. I have that recollection separating them. But it doesn't, it still doesn't. I think that what we talked about also, maybe it's in the minutes, was how we're going to communicate this with the town because you can't not talk about the cost of the flood, right? Correct. No, I understand and, that completely. No, I, think just... the, I think the idea, the idea was, and I'm trying to help you out here, Mark, that we would just treat that as a separate issue. We would say, you know, here's the operating budget. Here's the projected increase based on our operations. Now, here's the elephant in the room. Yes. Got all this flood stuff to deal with. At this point in time, we're still only guessing what the total cost is. And to a certain extent, we're only guessing about what funds are going to be available to do it. And I know sitting in Dorinda's seat, I'd be scared, I'd be scared silly too. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you say, okay, what happens when we get a bill for a quarter of a million dollars and there's no money to pay the bill? Well, right. You know, the, the the quick answer to that is that's what that's what banks are for. I'm hoping right. I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. I'm hoping we can piece this together so that uh, so that the you know effect on us is not that great. But it's it's still a gigantic unknown, and we could sit here and talk all night about what we think it's going to be, right? Especially what this other part of the road stuff is going to be. I mean, the first part of it we've got our arms around, but there's at least I don't know if it's another two point six million. That that's more than double what we've already done. So, and and the unknown is exactly my point. The distinction I'm making is between the known and the unknown. We know what our operating budget is going to be. We should go ahead and get that approved. And then we should deal with the unknown because we don't know how we're going to finance that. We don't really know until we know what the full damage is, and we might not know that for who knows several months. I think I think part of the the issue that creates the most rub, right, is the fact that we used we used the money that we had here to fund the work prior to and getting back to that point where, you know, if the if all of the flood funding was completely separate and we never touched our our general fund or the ARPA money or anything like that to help save on interest or anything like that, we'd still be sitting in a spot where we have that money for operational cash flow, and the concerns would be much lower as far as the amount of time it takes to figure it out, because we've got two school payments coming up that are going to be 1.8 or 1.9 million dollars over the next, you know, uh, 
couple months. Um, you know, I think Dorinda and I were talking about what the what the expected tax revenue might look like. Do we even have enough tax money coming in to cover the expenses that we know are coming our way? And because I think because um, we don't have that that fund balance to use as our operating cash, I think there's concern there. So I think we do need to address if we're going to separate them, then let's separate them. But we need to move forward and give some direction on on how we're going to tackle this this flood funding. Maybe um, I, I, I agree. I agree. Hundred percent on that. One of the yep. ideas I've been I've been kicking around is, you know, draw down that other hundred and fifty thousand on the on the line of credit and and refill our coffers for the money we put into this, whether it's ARPA funds or fund balance funds or whatever we call it. So. We've got a little float in our in our uh, in our operating situation. How we how we parse it out? I just I just want to be sure that we're able to communicate clearly to the voters on town meeting day what we're up against. Because I can tell you, people I've been talking to in town basically have no clue. I mean, they understand it's a lot of money. They understand FEMA's going to give us some of that money. They don't understand what what the match is going to be. I mean, they just they just don't understand. So, you know, is this an obligation the town has to deal with? You bet it is. And we may have one of the things I like about this bond bank situation, and I think I'm right, Dorinda, is that money we get to pay back over seven years, right? Yes. And first two years is only if you choose is only interest. Right. But you know, compared to the compared to the line of credit, which which is a one year at a time deal, and where I believe we're supposed to pay it down to zero right before it renews, are we? We have well. So what'll happen is it comes due in October, and they said they would readdress it then. That you know whether they would extend it or whether we would have to take out a new line of credit if we were still using that. Yeah. But all, all I'm saying is, you know, for the relatively modest amount of interest, if it makes us all feel better to to refill some of that ARPA money and refill our fund balance, um, that's a good, quick way to do it and have the money. And yeah, we're going to pay a little bit of interest on it, but uh, we've got some cash in the bank. And what is that? Is that... 3.9 percent is that what the 3.99 that's for the community loan bank yeah, yeah community bank. Mark. go ahead mark i have a question for dorinda dorinda you do you think that there's going to be any change in the in the numbers you put in for line items 28 29 before we approve the budget well we put zero in on line 28 um or didn't we? Yeah, yeah. zero on principal. There's plenty and... against the principal because you guys hadn't really decided at that point. So there's nothing there. And I think we plugged in these um the 30,000 based on what I, I think we found that you calculated it. Didn't yeah, you? I think we did some back of the napkin quick math, maybe, um to make sure there was something in there, but Mary. Um, um, we could take those, like you said, we could take those two things out of the budget, but when we set the tax rate, we still, we would have to, you know, that's one thing, whatever your budget increase or decrease is, doesn't affect what your tax rate's going to be. That's decided at the time that we're setting the tax rate, and that's all based on how much income we've got, and, um, you know, it's not the same it's right. not yeah you know, it's not proportional yep it's not it depends on the new grand list there's a lot that goes into it so can i make one more comment about this whole what mark was saying about what goes into this budget versus flood stuff so i think when you were making the comment oh it's a big unknown i don't think it is a big unknown we know what we've spent. We know what we have. We know what we need to borrow. We know what FEMA is going to give us. We've been told 
hopefully that maybe our match is going to be 7%, maybe, might if we're be, lucky. Might be Best as low case. as 3. Okay, so maybe 3, 7%. We also know what you guys have estimated for next year for road repairs. This budget passes July 1. All those road repairs are going to be done May, June, July, August, September. We need money to pay them. We're going to have to borrow because we won't have gotten that money from FEMA. So I believe we should include in here another, how much do we think we're going to spend? 2.6. To another 2.6 million. If we need to borrow another 2.6 million to cover next year's costs, we need to put that interest in here as well. Where? How else are we going to pay for it? Well, we don't have to do the whole amount, I don't right. think. Okay. We would have to do because a year's worth of payments. They, a year's well, a year's worth of payments, right? But right. a year's worth of payments is two point six. Well, no, it's yeah. not because you'd be paying interest only. Right. We only pay, yep. okay. and we only pay it once a year. So okay, it, it would come due next October when this one expires, unless we pay this one off with what FEMA gives us. Then we could take out a whole new one when we need it. Right. I guess I'm just worried about that. I, I'm not saying we need to put principal anywhere in here right. or the amount of spending, but we need to put some sort of interest payments because we know we're going to have to borrow to pay next year's work. Yeah, that that was my reason for asking Dorinda because I, I, I knew there was still something out there could be projected and put it in the budget. So this thirty thousand was on how much that you you said it was? I don't remember if we what did we use for I that? I think we used the um, what was pulled from the line of credit. Yeah, or? and then we did the four, the three point nine nine percent interest, mm -hmm. and then I think we put something else in there. I guess the reason that I say it would be important to add that too is that you know if this and again this would have walked out everything that you just cut. <laughs> by adding more interest in. But the townspeople have to understand that there's a cost to this flood and that we have to pay for it. And even if FEMA reimburses us, they don't reimburse us for interest. We pay the interest. So I think it behooves us to put a line item in for the interest for next year's borrowing that we're going to have to do. I would agree with you. Yeah. And that puts us over 10%. I don't, so, you know, I, I've expressed this to the budget committee, but my personal feelings is we should be planning for the worst and hoping for the best. And arbitrarily setting a, a percentage that we have to get under, no matter the cost, it just help, it hurts us and it impacts the future ability to operate the town and it's not being effectively. Right. Right. To the town. Uh, yeah. So while I, I mean, I still think that there are valid cuts, you know, yes. that are that are recommended here, uh -huh. but I totally support adding in the additional costs into this budget to carry those funds. And whether that wipes out the the total of the of the recommended cuts that we've already made and brings us back to where we started, so be it. It is what it is. Well, the what one do you thing think, I think and hope and pray that our citizens are going to understand is, you know, whatever the cost to the town, ultimate cost to the town is, including interest cost of borrowing, including match, including, you know, things that we can't get reimbursed for, which are going to be some, um, you know, that that's that's something that basically we have very little control over. And, you know, everybody wants to have roads that are safe and passable. We want to have the roads safe and passable. And, you know, we need to appropriate enough money to do that. So I am not, I am not particularly uh, tied to any percentage. I mean, it's always nice, you know, in the past, in the past, sometimes we set a goal for ourselves. I remember that happy years when we were projecting, you know, four or 5% increases. Well, guess what? Those days are gone, long gone. And I think we all know just from running our own households and businesses that the cost of everything's gone way up. So to expect the town 
to be able to live with a relatively modest increase, uh, I hope they'll understand that we just can't do it and provide the services that everybody wants. So, you know, I agree, I agree with adding the interest back in. I think that I think that that makes sense. Um, in terms of the principal, I think we should keep that separate. I, I think so too. That just put, puts things way out of whack. Yes, Mark. So, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable with bumping up line item 29 to put in a realistic estimate of what that interest payment will be next year. And then we'll just see what the increase comes out to and what it is, it is. Unless we want to look for more places to cut, the percentage is what it is, and we explain it to the taxpayers. So I would also say two, two other positive things. One is, and Dorinda always pulls me up short on this, but over, over the lion's share of years, we underspend our budget. Now, there have been a few times in recent years when we've overspent our budget. So we certainly can't count that we're going to underspend it, but there's always that chance. Um, you know, we're going through a reappraisal. That, that's going to trickle down and affect us. We all got the... We all saw the uh, saw the report. Our uh, our uh, numbers have dropped from what did they what did they drop from like ninety to eighty roughly 80, 81 to seventy one the CLA eighty one to seventy one right yeah the CLA so you know the good news is we're ahead of the curve on our reappraisal because almost certainly next year they would mandate that we do a reappraisal and we're already uh, and we're already doing it but from where I sit our primary responsibility is to meet the needs of the town. And when we're talking about the town, we're mostly talking about roads because that's the big chunk of the budget. We can't do anything about the school. It'd be nice if we could, but practically. Okay. So I think- what would, be, what, would be the number, what would be the number we should plug in for interest, do you think, Dorinda? Well, that's Randy what Randy's saying. Randy, why don't you tell us what- Oh, I didn't. I didn't calculate it, but I just said that line item essentially should cover um, one year's of interest for the full $4.8 million that we've incurred or will incur for the flood recovery efforts. So everything that we've done thus far, plus the $2.6 million that's coming um, next spring. So I think we've spent roughly $2.2 uh already uh even though we've only borrowed the 1.5 i think you said earlier we've actually incurred 2.2 million dollars worth of uh work and then the 2.6 will bring us to that 4.8 so 2.6 so plus 1.5 no it's the 2.2 plus the uh 2.6 but we've only borrowed we've only borrowed but if we have to go back and, and keep borrow more to replenish okay gotcha you'll, you'll be here excuse too. me Randy, don't we yeah. don't Dorinda, don't we expect to get uh, a FEMA money hopefully sometime this spring for the work we've already done? So I don't think we need to do the whole four point six or whatever it is. It's we're not be collecting that FEMA money. It's not coming in in one lump sum. It comes in piecemeal. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have six thousand dollars coming in sometime along that for our dumpsters. I don't buy it now. That ought to be yeah. but then like and, me on the process there just so what happens yeah. is one we submit everything to our contact at FEMA. He goes through it with a fine-tooth comb. And then once he's satisfied that all the bills and everything is in order, he sends it on to his bigger people, and then they go through it. If it's under $250,000, it's a quicker process. And what they do is they release the funds to the state. Then the state pays us. Um, the, if it's over $250,000 per project, they have to go through an audit process. And that will take longer for the fund. We were told it drifts the size of six thousand dollars versus what? What have we said? Well, that's all that's been submitted. We were just told last week that they submitted the Brook Road mm -hmm. for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, 
So that has now left the hands of our representative and has gone on to FEMA. We have not heard that it's gone from FEMA to the Vermont yet. But we have submitted all of our work to date to our FEMA person. Yes, we yeah. have. And that's well, how... not today. Everything in what was considered emergency. Was... Okay. And that was two, how much? It was two point, that portion was like 2.1 okay. or something mm -hmm. like that. So, so that, hold on, that, Randy. Uh, uh, hold on, Peter. Randy's okay. talking. It's it's been a three to four month process to reclaim this okay. six or seven thousand dollars. It's a process, and Vic has had a question. I'd like to come on. Well, it's just uh, just a caution, I guess. Is uh, you know we say two point six million for this stuff coming up, but we don't know. We don't know what those contractors are going to bid. I mean, great. It would be great if they came in at two. Right, but what? We've got the estimate that was put together. That's all we can run off yeah. right now. Right. The one thing, though, we need to consider that if it runs past any work running past July, if we're we're taking out a new loan in October of 2025 or 2024, let's see, that's going to come due. We're always a year behind, right? Before we borrow that money, so we won't have to pay that. So if we borrowed it in fiscal year 25, we wouldn't have to pay for it until fiscal year 26. Okay. But we still know we have to borrow money in fiscal year 2024 to pay people right. this summer. Yes, this coming probably summer. will. So yes. that's where this 4.8 right. million, and do you have a calculator, Mark, that you're able to plug in what the interest rate of 3.99 would be or 4%? For 4.8 million for one year? While you're working on that, I, did, I just want to say again, I don't think it needs to be 4.8. I mean, I, I agree the money is going to dribble in from FEMA, but, you know, with some luck, we're going to get some of that money before the start of next year. But certainly uh, the rest of it, I would expect, would come in next year. So it's never going to be, and I don't know what the number is going to be, but it's never going to be 4.8, I don't think. You're right. But it's also, you're only going to get this last year's stuff coming in this year. In right. 2025, you're not going to get the next 2.6 million until 2026. Well, I understand this, but all I'm saying, a whole 4.6 is never going to be there at one point in time. Either the work won't have been done yet, the cost won't have been incurred, money will come in from FEMA. I don't know what the magic number is. Maybe it's 3 million, maybe it's 2.5 million. I don't know, but I don't think it's 4.8. That's all I'm saying. And if People want to no, put interest for 4.8. Um, that's fine, but I think we're overstating the need. Okay. Is our goal tonight to pass this budget? No. Okay. I didn't think so. No. Okay. The other thing, the rate might be Paul, different than 3.99. Uh, right, the rate might be different. Mark. I, I just have a question for Dorinda. In terms of the size of the projects we're submitting to FEMA. I'm assuming our strategy is to try to keep as many of them at 250 grand or below, so it'll be a quicker process. Is that accurate? I do. That's accurate. Um, I believe it was four or five that we had no choice. Yeah. It yep. ran over. Um, okay. But already we're under the 250. Okay. So. Um... Mark, at some point, are you able to do that calculation? I thought you had it. Sorry. What's that? At some point, are you able to do a calculation on one year's worth of interest at 4% for 4.8 million? Four million? Well, I don't, I don't have um, my little calculator on my laptop is not a uh, let's just yeah. say it's okay. not so at some point that's the number that needs to go into yeah. the line yep. item to plug. Yeah. Because the 30,000 was based on what number? 2.2 2 million? 160,000 is the interest. So even if we cut that in half, that would be 80. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, got, no, big I mean that's the reality. I got one hundred ninety-one thousand, but I was on four point eight million. Oh no, I put yeah. Oh, what did you put in? What did you use? Four. Yeah. Okay, so four million was one hundred and 
60,000, so 2 million. I mean, I'm just, Yep. You know, would, I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, I think that we need to be, by, by, by putting in only 2 million for the, or for an interest payment on 2 million isn't accurate, is that correct? It's not. I mean, I so. it's not. So let's just put in the eighty thousand for four million. I think that's a little high. Do you think that's a little high? Yeah, I because I mean I think it's going to go over not just the twenty five budget. I think it'll end up rolling into, into the, the twenty six. So how about sixty? Sixty. Yeah, 60K. yeah what, I'm I'm good with that's doubling it to sixty. Okay, let's do sixty k. Does everyone feel okay with that? Jeff. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> well, welcome. Yes. Didn't know what you were getting me. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're behind on our um, on our schedule by quite a bit. I thought I was doing really well until I wasn't. Uh, we're half an hour behind. Um, is everyone okay that we move on to the treasurer's report? <laughs> I don't think I have a report. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me just update on IT services and other um, issues. Which I uh, took care of that one. You guys, I emailed over. I received it at 11 o'clock this morning the audit report from Bonnie. Yeah, I did not. Um, so I, we need to accept it at some point. Okay. I went through it today. The I only um, actually there was only one thing in it that and it just referred to a date and not any kind of financial and it wasn't her finding we found they made the mistake so um, but I didn't see anything but I okay, guess if we're going to have another meeting or something then okay. maybe we can approve it then okay do you have suggestions. Um... For like the layperson, what what part of the report is best for us to look at? Like, is there a summary? I read the first couple pages of okay. it is um, pretty much summarizes it, and then the rest of it gets into the detail okay. of all the funds. And um, the other thing was uh, I did hear, which will come up probably it, or has come up, Ruben from RB Technologies contacted me wanting to know the status of what we were gonna do. Um, we are falling further and further. I think when he was here last, he said it was six months out before he could get to some of our work. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I just wanna bring that up that I know what we're doing, but I wanted to know he contacted me and get it. So for your reference, we had interviewed, um, what was that fellow's name? Oh, Bob, Bob Butler, Bob Butler um, who came to a meeting. Um, he's out of Waterbury and does IT services for some of the media, like Waterbury municipality. And then um, he, the next day, sent us an email saying, actually, I don't have the time to help you. So we sort of are back to square one if we're going to be considering um, looking for other IT uh, service providers. Um, so I don't know if we want to continue to do that or we want to just tell RB that we're going to continue working with them. What are people's thoughts? Let's look. Let's I mean, look. Yeah, I've got uh, a list of probably five entities that folks have you know, provided for referrals to reach out to. Okay. You know, if we if we're gonna move forward with this, I'd be happy to call. Or, or I know Dorinda's been kind of heading this up or help her. You know, uh, make these calls. I think leaving it at you know, Dorinda and Sarah are both pretty busy yep. these days. You know, uh, and and leaving it at their feet, I think, is unfair to them. Um, with without us being able to provide yep. you know that outreach, so. Um, I'm happy to reach out to these entities that folks are are um, referring to us. I accept more referrals if folks have other people that that think we should be reaching out to. But I think we absolutely have to do something okay. here, and we can't keep kicking the can down the road. Are you comfortable with that, Drina? Yeah, I. Yeah. What uh, is a sideline? What is 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 Jeff going to get? School email. email. 
Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say school? Yeah, school. School on this like. So, well, I mean, so he can stay in the same room. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll get yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, he'll start to get emails. He'll get a. You'll receive. Make sure you leave your personal email so we can send you the information for your um town email. Yeah. And then yeah. all your emails will come through there. Okay. I was going to say on the IT piece, I've got a pretty huge IT department with a lot of people that are local that may have some recommendations. Okay. They can subcontract a little bit so they can have some names. I've heard of RB technologies, but okay. not in a good way. Yeah, I'd be happy to get it. When does our contract with RB expire? I don't think we have it anymore. Think we, we did issue we did issue another we contract. We did issue another contract. But um, essentially, I think we've got a 60-day window there that we can terminate that contract at any point in time, either side. Um, yeah. We discussed that in the review when we decided we were going to sign uh, the contract that they kind of... Right, I remember that. I just think we need to... I, I really think we need to move full speed ahead. I mean, one of the things I can do, uh, Randy, from out here in Colorado, is I can make some of those phone calls and contacts, too, to help you uh, to help you out. Um, I don't think necessarily, I mean, what, what I think if, if, if we come down with possibly two people who are good candidates to do this, they should come in and meet with the board, but I don't think we need to meet with four or five different people. I would hope we don't need to. Yeah. All but right, anything we else? Made it, we made it a goal that by town meeting day, we had made a decision on this. I think that would be a victory. It's gonna take some it's gonna take some time and attention, but we need to do it. And the kicking it down the road thing is just too easy to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we don't need a motion, do we? No, you did you have one more comment? No, I was just going to say if somebody could pull it out, some of the needs for me, it'll help me ask the right questions. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull the existing contract with RB and pull out the services that we're currently getting um, so that I can talk more intelligently about what this is. So I'll, I'll share that. Sarah, did you have any comments? No. Okay. Um, anything else, Strinda? No, I think we're ready for now. Great. Thank you. Uh, highway report. Boys, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you want to know? Uh, new truck is still at the dealer. Uh, How long has that been? It's been uh, about a month. Pretty close to it. Uh, the Freightliner's back on the road for now. Um, and the International is going next week to get some suspension work done that needs to be replaced on. Expensive. Extensive suspension. Yeah. What's extensive, yours? extensive, extension. Worn out and broken parts. Say Worn that many times. Broke, right. Caused by driving too fast over a car. Meaning people or the, yeah. our, our, our workers? Well, our, our workers people, are driving. People aren't driving our trucks. Right. <laughs> oh, I meant like sometimes when people go fast, it's washboard and then it causes problems to your suspension. But you're saying it's from well, it's workers it's, driving. It's just okay. rough roads. Yep. yep. And you're handling that internally, I imagine. Okay. What um, do we have for trucks on the road today? Two. Two o'clock? Yeah. That's not very many, is it? Um, well, we have a grader too, but yeah. Let me ask you uh, just and, for my own personal question about the grader. Is there a temperature where you can't like with the you know how it became really muddy and then it froze? Are you, is it impossible to grade on a frozen road? Absolutely. When it's okay. rock. When it's yeah. rock. Yeah, yeah, you're you not gonna do, do anything with it. And that's that's okay. another thing that that uh, I've been discussing or we've been discussing. You know, we've said a couple of times, you know, we're out five, seven years on these uh, trucks for replacement. And the quality of the trucks just aren't there. And I, I think if we could, we've got to look at it. The other thing is due to the fact that we never used to run a greater year round. Well, we we're, we're burning up our warranty right now. Right. Oh, because it's. Right. And we've had a mild-ish winter and we right. had to use it because. But we've mud. been using it to plus snow. Because plus, plus, plus the fact that 
this freestyle thing, freestyle thing, we're using our grader a lot more than we used to. Mm -hmm. I don't know what freestyle means. Huh? I don't know what freestyle means. Freestyle. Oh, freestyle. freestyle. Okay. Freestyle. So you can freestyle skating or something like that. Or yeah. climate change. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's that's well, that's where we're at. So okay. What are you what are you trying to say, Vic? Are you suggesting a uh, faster replacement schedule yes. for the equipment? Yeah. Okay. I mean it's I, just not I just wanted to that. name it. It's Sorry. not gonna it's not gonna they're not gonna live. I mean yeah, they don't live long. And our I, freight liner is a is a fine, fine, fine example. Yeah. yeah. And I think we need to look into maybe keeping one of our trucks that we have that's in decent shape for a backup. Oh. Instead of selling it, trading it in. We really need to have some kind of backup because right now when we're down a truck or two, we were down two trucks for a couple of weeks. And you, the other thing we, I really want to point out, you know, and I think I think the whole select board should know, and and all the, pe the people should know in the town that um, Eric's uh, Eric's gone above and beyond here to keep those running. Okay, he's doing a lot of the mechanic work, well, all of it. Yeah. Rather than sending it out, remember we used to send it out all, and we used to go to the dealer, we used to go to Bootsy's, and granted, it still costs you know money because you still got to buy the parts, but but it keeps him pretty busy, and we're and we're pretty fortunate to have somebody keep a, an eye on it like he's doing. So catch up wise, you've got two at work. One that's going in for suspension repairs is that one of the two. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that'll be tied up for probably two days. What's the truck at the dealer? Is that a new purchase? Yeah, but it's it's there because it was a new purchase last year and it's there for coolant issues. It's just disappearing. So and, and is that sitting there because they're waiting on parts or what no, are they that, what are they sitting, telling us? They're telling us that they had COVID and they couldn't work on it. And they don't have enough help. Yep. They don't have enough help. I mean, it's a standard thing with dealers. We don't have enough help. Is the warranty? So is, every, oh, you're right. uh, is, is everybody on hold like that? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. I know the only thing you know, Randy, is anecdotal. And it's really, you know, what can I say? I mean, I, can, I heard this, but. <laughs> I think that uh, it's very frustrating for everybody. I know from the industry that I'm in that that is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Skill repairs are in short supply. Yeah. Question about the warranty. Is it based on the number of hours? Yes. That's why you said, because we're using it in the winter, we're our warranty. We're up our warranty. Up our warranty. Gotcha. For far less rigorous work. Or, you know, You're we're not trying to. on your first night. <laughs> trying to make you aware of it, not so. Aware. Yeah, it's just, it's just you guys need to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, any questions uh, about the highway from anyone, the roads? Anything else you want to add? No. Okay, great. All righty. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, go ahead. Um. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um. Yeah, I got, a, I got uh, approached, and uh, someone, and uh, two or three different people have asked me. Those potholes over on Culver Hill, over on uh, Shady Rail. Shady Rail. And they are bad. And a lot of people saying that they had to spend like seven, eight hundred bucks for tires because they hit the holes. Now that I mean, I don't know of any way to delineate those holes. And I don't know of any way to repair those holes this time of year. I don't think you Eric. Put a cone in. Well, yeah, you put a cone in them, but then you've got a cone on the road, and then when we plow, it goes away. Oh yeah, it gets flat over here. So the problem is you pull the coal patch in and then the next time you drive over it or it rains or you plow it, it's gone. Really the pavement, those those black pavement things that you put in, what happens to it? Gets pulled out. It just gets pulled out. It's frozen ground frozen ground. The water gets in out. there, pops out. Really? Oh yeah. Like a clump of it. Oh yeah. yeah. The plow hits it and it goes away. I mean at some okay. point, as Eric has said, what we talked about is uh you know, we might have to go in there and coal plane some of that stuff. Get get somebody that act. You know what coal planing is. Oh, you I remember. Could spot mill those areas and yeah. actually put hot mix down with emulsion so it stays. Coal planing is the grinding of that material out, grinding that hole out, and be yeah. wider than the hole. 
Yeah. Okay. So you get back to actually good asphalt to where you're not, where it's all crumbled up. You have something good to actually right. adhere to. Is there maybe a sign we could put up that says bump or something like that? Sure. I mean, I'm just suggesting this because there's nothing else we can do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I think, you know, so, uh, you know, my comment on this is the people who drive that road every day should know where the potholes are, right? I mean, they go up and down that road every day. Now, some appear, some disappear, whatever. But any kind of signage or anything we can do just to show people where they are so they can avoid them. Because I agree, in the past, we've used cold patch. It doesn't last a week. That's why there's that. Do you ever go up to the hospital from Montpelier? And there's a terrible pothole there that, like, literally, and that's why. I'm like, why don't they fix it? But that's why. They can't. Right. It doesn't stay. That's a terrible pothole. All right. Um, anything else? So so um, if that's possible for you guys to get some sort yeah. of, like, sign, that would be great. Um, anything else about the roads before we move on? Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah, good luck tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Be nice. Um <laughs> before before we move on, I just I was just thinking about tomorrow and if we've got two trucks that are available. You talked about the grainer. We've got four four people. Are you not going out? No, I'm in the pickup. So so the trucks you're not including the pickup or anything right. like that. I mean, I can't, I can't go out and stand roads, but yeah. I can salt the David. Thank you, George. Thank Thanks for your service. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and everybody just needs to drive slowly, too. I mean, that's the reality. Anyone who's watching, drive slowly. Okay. Uh, we are now on other business, and I believe we have Adrian. And are you also here, Phil, for this? Or... Okay. And who else? Sorry, no one. Okay, just two of you on the EWP. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the EWP grant application, and Sarah sent us this afternoon um, the answers to the the questions around sort of the town having to front the money um, to uh, support uh, the the payments to the contractors. Do you want to give us some more information about that, Adrian? Or? Yeah. First off, there were three of us doing. Yeah, so I think maybe Jeff needs a little. Bit yeah. Back. Okay. Yeah. Give Jeff a little. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I haven't been able to read this email, so I would welcome the information so as well. So this is a national, a national research and conservation service federal um, program, and this this piece of it's called the Emergency Watershed Protection Program, and it was brought to the select board as a program that landowners who have imminent damage, imminent threat to more damage and in the next event are able to have an engineer come in and look at the dam, the problem in their land. And if they qualify for very specific specifications from this program, the program will pay 100% of the engineering cost to fix whatever it is. And it's mostly stream and water damage and protection for the next event. The program will pay 75% of the construction cost and the landowner has to come up with 25% of the cost. So back in August, this program was presented uh, maybe to the select board yeah. and yeah, Bridget Browning at the time yeah. did the presentation and said she would do the kind of the lead on it and could the Conservation Commission help us? And I agreed to do it with Larry Becker, who is also on the Conservation Commission, who is the technical director of this whole thing. And I am just the chair of the Conservation Commission, willing to do the grunt work. So the state engineer came in, looked at 29 or 30 different, we, we put a um, thing out in front of the porch farm and said, if you have damage and hear the, the specifications, if you think you might qualify, let us know. The state engineer, Mike LaPointe, came out with some other people. Phil did some visits. Larry, either Phil or Larry were on every visit and came up with 10 people that qualified based on the specifications. So what we're trying to do now is fill out the application that will allow us to apply for the grant. The money comes from the federal government into the state, into their program, and then the state releases it to the town. And what we just found out is they release it as a reimbursement. 
which is a bummer, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, it's about $418,000 for all 10 projects included, the total amount. So 25%, and I actually, um, so the town would cover 75% of that through the fed, through the federal money that comes to the state. The landowners will cover the other 25%. Um, the engineering costs would be covered 100% through this program. So what I have here is an application today to fill out what Mike LaPointe, who is the engineer, told me this afternoon after I got these emails from Dorenda and Sarah, was that you can, and a select board person has to sign it because you have the financial fiduciary that the Conservation Commission doesn't have, that we can sign the application, we can submit it, and we can pull out at any time if we can't figure out how to do reimbursements, how to figure out the contracting. I brought Phil because he was part of it. I really know nothing. I've been just trying to figure out, you know, I've been doing what people have been telling me to do, but it is not my forte. Um, so these 10 landowners would have streams that would then be more secure. I think in the long run, it would improve the roads in some of those areas also because the stream banks are contained, hopefully. Um, so my suggestion is that we fill out this application, we apply for it, we're not putting up any money right now. And then we as the Conservation Commission, we need one select board person to take Bridget's place. And it's really unfortunate that that's the way it is, but you know, she volunteered to do it, now she's not here. To see if we can figure out, one of my thoughts is to get the 25% that the landowners would owe to maybe as soon as they sign a contract, they put that in a town escrow account so that the town has that money before the work begins. So the, the town doesn't feel like they have to go around collecting landowners money. Um, Mike LaPointe said the reimbursement from the state comes in within 30 days. So that's something maybe we can work on. Um, and then I'm hoping and, I, you know, I'm not, I don't know about contracts. My husband knows a ton about contracts. Phil offered to help. Larry's in Hawaii right now, but I think he could help if we can figure out how to support the town so that you're not doing all the legwork for the contracts. Maybe we could make this so it isn't a burden to you guys. So, Adrian, but, Peter? Hi. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So, my, my biggest concern in this is, um, I mean, yes, I mean, you've heard all the discussion tonight about cash flow and where the money's going to come from and all that. So here we go again, right? But uh, yeah, what I'm concerned understand. about is the issue. So you have you have 10 projects which qualify. Do you have any sense how many of those people are going to be willing to put up the 25%? Because I find it hard to believe that everybody's going to say, oh, sure, we'll put the money in escrow. I called every single, I take it back. There were two people who I didn't get phone numbers for, so I emailed them. So I talked to eight of the people and I emailed two people. There was one person who responded back to me later and said, is it possible to do a payment plan? Mm -hmm. All the rest of them said, okay. You know, I was giving them the information and they didn't say, oh my God, I can't do that. I think when push came to shove, they might not be able to, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah. And Phil is actually one of the people, and I don't know if you can sort of speak to the damage and people had severe damage. And so they need to do something about it. Getting 75% paid for is a pretty good deal if you've got to do something. Yeah. Um, as Adrian said, I, I went on a lot of these visits. I mean, some of them, um, well, we visited Everyone who wanted to be seen, we thought they had damage. Um, yeah, but the two thirds of the people didn't qualify. You know, their their driveway eroded; that's not covered, or they got water in their cellar because they have bad drainage. the The real focus here is is stream bank, and I think a lot of our road damage is also related. We have many of our roads run right along streams, or streams run along roads, but those those were the paths, and that's where the roads got placed. Um, so some of this damage also spilled over in, in onto roads. Um, and but 
but the focus, the real focus of the program is to protect um, homes. Right. Um, and so to not have floods that wipe out uh, houses for people. Um, and I mean, in my case, uh, we lost about 12 feet of uh, stream bank. And although it never flooded, that erosion has um, encroached upon my leach field. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if the leach field in another event gets destroyed, my house is not livable. So it is one of the projects. It's those kinds of things uh, that they're looking at. Uh, up, the, up the road from me, there's a place where the river turns. It gets very close to the road. It's close to utility poles. And USDA's concern is that this could, in fact, impact a roadway. It could impact uh, electrical infrastructure. So they're looking at, at those kinds of things. Um, so of these 10 of the projects are the ones that are pretty severe and do qualify. They meet you know, all the issues. And so far, people are, are looking pretty seriously at taking advantage of this. Um, there's more discussion going on, as most of you know, with the legislature back in session saying that you know streams and rivers um, and flooding mitigation is a top priority. And, and in fact, you've probably heard the governor say, look, no, no one town uh, ha fully contains a stream or a river. These are multiple town issues. They're statewide issues. And I know in, within my area, within my neighborhood, a number of us along the river have talked and said, I know, you know we're impacted, but we don't own the river. Um, and in fact, we've been told we can't touch the river um, by the by the state. Um, so there's some discussion about should we have any liability or should the state, let's say in this case, 25 percent on the on the share, should the state, in fact, pick that up? And, if, you know, they're going to go down that road. I think a number of us will look to see about that, um, because obviously I have a huge log jam. Uh, at the one edge of my property. Um, and that's, that's going to impact people downstream. So is like, should I be paying 25% of the cost of this when it also relates to other people who are going to be farther downstream or potentially even into the news? A lot of issues swirling around, but not to complicate that, but just to throw a little gas on your budget fire here. Um, I think it's something that we've gone this far down the road as far as talking to people, uh, talking about engineering studies, a lot of work put in already, that we'd really like to encourage you to sign off on this project. It, it essentially will be cost neutral, except for maybe some interest money, because we may have to ask you or, you know, you know we're going to have to deal with the treasurer on this, um, that there may have to be some short-term loans until money can come in from the state. Again, it's not, you know, we're like looking at 300,000 roughly that uh, USDA will contribute. Um, we really don't know what the timeline is going to be because we haven't sat down to do any of that until we know whether or not we're going to move forward. You have to authorize that before we're going to you know, go ahead and start to look at how do we do the contracting? Do we look for one contractor? Do we look for multiple contractors, depending upon the size of the jobs? What's the timeline going to be like? So um, it could be smaller amounts spread out over uh, a, a year, potentially. Well, the expiration date now is January 9th, 2025. Oh, OK. Um, it's been extended. So that's for work completed? Yeah. And one of my thoughts was nine out of the 10 of these projects, the um, recommendations are either stream water protection, stream bank protection, or debris removal. And then there's one project up on Zidane Road that's a rock lined waterway. So one of my thoughts is we could get one contract, one contractor to do all nine. It seems like they're very similar things to do. And that would simplify everything if we could do one contract or something like that. But again, I'm just kind of, you yeah. know, <laughs> and, and it's mostly riprap yeah, where they're looking to stabilize they're stream bank or, yeah. or take out wood. Yeah. Randy? I'm wondering if there's been any consideration or talk amongst these projects to, to understand if 
uh, the property owners themselves are in a position to incur the cost and borrow money and and allow the town to implement the accept money from the state and essentially uh, provide the distribution at completion so the town's not you know kind of uh, on the hook right. for you know covering interest or anything else if it, if the private party was able to do so and the yeah. town was simply a mechanism for distribution um so, it sits much better with me yeah. some of the costs run from 60,000 55,000 23,000 19,000 3,000 this is a 75% share 86,000 15,000 14,000 14,000 19,000 yeah so that's a substantial that's amount a of money amount. for somebody and, and many yeah. of these people could not afford to okay. do that. Yeah, and maybe couldn't afford to do the 25%, in which case they'll be, they won't, they they won't, won't participate. participate. Right. Right. right, exactly. Can I say one yeah. more thing? I got an email from Mike LaPointe, who is the state engineer who has been doing all this, who has been incredibly responsive and responsible right on top of it. And I emailed him this, this afternoon and he got back to me and he said that they, the people that are doing this, have um, had conversations with the Vermont DEC and the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources um, and submit, oh, the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources submitted their request for the EWP program assistance, and they weren't able to produce a viable solution to help municipalities. And he said, I believe the state does have a process in place that can be used to help municipalities with managing the agreements. I'm not sure if it's through regional planning or another entity. And he said, I'll forward the information if I find the email that discussed this. And I didn't hear that from him. But so that this, I don't think we're the only ones having this discussion yeah. about it. Um, did you say that the the work gets done and it gets submitted to FEMA or somebody else before it it's goes not to the FEMA. state? No. Who is it? No, it's this is it's, it's, it's the all state program. It's, it's a USDA program USDA. that's administered through the state. Okay. So Mike is the money goes from the federal government okay. to the state and then they release it to the municipalities. Yeah. The reason I ask is we have spent a tremendous amount of hours as far as right now we have one project that's being held up because we can't produce an invoice for 162 cubic yards of material that states 162 yards. We've got hundreds of yards that was delivered. <laughs> But they are looking for one that says 100. And so if it's that kind of detail that for them to approve, this is, I can tell you, this is going to be quite the paperwork project for a contractor or anybody. We had to have load slips from color crushing, from pike, from everybody that we did business with. And it's had, not FEMA. It's not it's so, so this USDA it's not, not related gonna... to FEMA at all. Okay. So okay. there's none of that, that paperwork. I don't involved. know the answer to that, but I do there know there will it, be paperwork. It has it'll be paper. If it's USDA. <laughs> if it's USDA, it's gonna I'm assuming it's gonna be around the same yeah. lines. And yeah. it's there it, it's unbelievable. I, I can talk to Mike about the detail you know I'm, yeah. I'm telling you i know nothing about I, it yeah. you know no, I, and i yeah. just want you guys not to think that it's just a matter of okay they submit it and then you know a few days later it goes to the state who releases if it's anything like we're going through with what we're having to prove and yeah. document now it it's monumental somewhere. So I would suggest. Um, oh, here I. He said I believe the only thing that Middlesex would need to do to close the agreement would oh would be to submit a final final financial report SF four twenty five and a final progress report. Shelley, uh, I had something similar when I lived in Fairfax. Where after I bought the house, three months later my oil tank was filled in a storm, knocked it over, so I had oil spill all over, and I had to go through some type of grant. Town never got involved. I had to pay twenty five percent, and the state took care of all of it for me. I sent them the bills, and uh, they paid yeah. all. Yeah, this is, but this is the, this is they're making it go through. It's the so that, and that, that might have been a hazardous waste. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. It was. This one does go through the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But soil so, conservation and waterway mitigation. That's a whole different outfit. USDA soil conservation. 
that we've seen a special thing in one USD, of yeah, USD. Stream bank, stream bank. So yeah. you guys, in the interest of time, hey, I, I would agree that we um, that we move to approve applying for this, knowing that there are lots of issues that we have, and that I would say I, I would really hope that the Conservation Commission would take the lead on the paperwork piece of it. And when you so said you have, have to have a when you that you have to have a board member, do you just mean a board member as like? I'm okay with this. Like, well, or like you mean? have to sign all these papers. Yeah, that okay. I have tonight. All right, but like, um, I think yes, and we are taking the lead. You know, Bridget took the lead because she found the program. Right. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. Mike has been wonderful answering my questions. He's probably rolling his eyes like, well, "Who is this person?" You know. Yeah. But um, if I can get, you know, Phil can help. If if it comes down to contracts, and my husband can help because he knows exactly what he's doing with that. Okay. Yeah, I would really like to. Help I agree. This this really is something we should support for many reasons. One, the roads. Uh, two, uh, th this is our tax base, right? Yep. We don't want to lose yep. homes, and we want to keep people in Middlesex, right? Okay. And we want to, you know, make sure that we're not washing away the world, yeah. and um, and that this opportunity really is sort of net zero, with some interest potentially. And that we would be foolish not to take advantage of this, knowing what we have, but that we have to have, we can't have Dorinda and Sarah be managing it. I, I mean, they're going to have to do something, yeah. but they can't be the ones yeah. that are managing the people. And Sarah has been completely clear about that since day one. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say that I came if there's a motion yesterday to ask questions. It was Liz, no. Liz. Yes. Liz. No, with that, with good. all that, with all that said, and realizing that there's some unknowns, I would make the motion that we uh, take the next step and sign the paperwork and uh, work our way, uh, continue to work our way through this. Okay. And if we could get one point person on the select board, I think that would be easier for you guys. Yeah. And if I needed signatures or I needed something from you, I could just call. Well, we have a new member. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm um, as you much can, in the dark as I. Yeah, and so it starts. <laughs> if you want to put me in, you can put me on there. As okay, so do you want to sign these papers? Tonight? Yeah, I'll sign it tonight. Well, I think we're going to sign us. Okay. Sign us. We have to put it earlier that I could do it every meeting or not. Sure. Later. Why not? Well, I thought that's what it was. Well, <laughs> just in case, just that's in fine. case the federal government yes. goes through. Okay. Need, Get Sarah to so write is there a it? second to Peter's motion? Yes. Okay, and the, with the adding to the motion that Liz can sign the paperwork. Who who did who seconded Peter's motion? No one yet. Uh, Vic did. <laughs> okay, all those in favor of um, signing the oh, EWP please. grant application and allowing Liz to sign, say aye. Uh, oh, there's aye. aye. Okay. The ayes have it, Sarah. All right. Thank you for coming and thank thanks you for explaining that. Leave yeah. Oh, yeah. Leave it there. Um, do it. Yeah. I mean, do you want me to just sign it right now? Yeah. You leave? Well, there are a couple of them. I don't know. Do you need to keep going with the meeting? Uh, I can leave them and pick them up. Oh, you can pick them up. I just want to submit them as soon as possible. Yeah. So if you leave them and pick them up tomorrow, I'll sign them tonight. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. It. All right. Honeybee Barrett's request to be designated emergency shelter coordination action likely. Um, Honey's not here. Honey's not here. Uh, do you know anything about this, Steve? Have you talked with Honey at all uh, as the emergency I've not coordinator? Had a communication okay. with her yet. Okay. Um, or why the Sarah that I got. It's not, it's not a time sensitive. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. I mean, I she she managed the right. she helped manage during the flood. Um, all right, the chair needs lunch. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yes. Uh, don't be. Okay. So, but you, you can just do with Sarah. Okay. Um. Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just make sure. Yeah. So that's yeah, I don't need that. <laughs> so I need the board member. I think it is. Okay, I agree. Yeah, so yeah. 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 Oh, so that's just like we're mounted there. So one. Okay. Thank you. They were genuinely good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
act, is there a motion to move Honeybee Barrett as to be the designated emergency shelter coordinator? I think she did a great job during the flood and she's very civic minded. Is there a motion? I'm not even sure. Doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't technically need a motion. Okay, then let's just say this one has on it. Congratulations, Honeybee Barrett. Okay, orders. We've done that. Correspondence. Um, I have, can I just share a little correspondence? Um, so uh, this is in regard to the town hall renovation. Um, I know. So I have, um, I have been in touch with Megan and uh, from BIA and uh, about um, talking about the design development phase, how we've discussed adding to the ballot a line item to ask the voters if they want to pay for the design development phase for the town hall um, renovation. And um, and she she got back to me and um, with sort of a clearer number. I do have a meeting with her this Friday and Dave Megita and Sandy are coming to that meeting. Um, and um, really what we'd be looking at is um, because the price potentially has gone up since they originally quoted it this past spring, it would be fifty thousand for the design, up to fifty thousand for the design um, phase, plus ten thousand for a construction manager that's associated with that design phase. So asking the town for up to 60,000 to pay for the design development phase with a project with a construction manager. So can I just yes. speak to that a little bit? It's, I just want to make sure it's clear that folks don't think that it jumped from like the, the 45,000 to the 50,000 just haphazardly. <clears throat> um, I think the number was like fifty three thousand or forty three thousand dollars or yeah. something like that. Forty eight. Um, no, but, it was forty three in the line item on the, on a spreadsheet. Yeah, but um, uh, just trying to make sure that we're covering, you know, any potential change or anything, adding a contingency of approximately twenty percent is how you get to that uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars or up to fifty thousand dollars. Up to fifty, and then the ten is. So, so Dave and Sandy and I, and Dave gave me a little background on these project, these construction managers, and that um, my feeling, and after talking with Randy, um, is that we definitely have to have a construction manager for this project. Like, we can't do it ourselves as a board, right? So, um, as a part of this design development phase, if we're going to have a construction manager, that needs to be a part of this phase as well. So that's it. So if we are asking, so we decided rather than do, just throwing a big bond out there to the town and saying, do you want to pay for renovation that we would, and this was Dave Megita's suggestion as well, is that we do the design development first before we present a bond to the voters. And then we as a select board said, well, rather than trying to find money like ARPA money to pay for this design development, let's see if the town really even wants it in the first place. So putting it on the ballot to ask them for an additional 60,000 to do the design development plus a project manager. Was there a rough estimate back up before we talking about a renovation of this building? Yes, a renovation, a major renovation. Uh, yes, so like 2 point what? 2.1. Yeah, 2.1 million. Um, and we have a whole presentation on it. We have all the documents that you are more than welcome to look at. It's actually in a lot of it is on what's next middle cells on the website and on our website. Yep. Yeah. So you can see we've had we have a schematic already. So we hired BIA through a grant that we had to do a um, architectural study, yeah. um, knowing all of the um, deficits we have currently in the town hall. So that's where a renovation came out with a subcommittee of folks that we've been doing this over the last year. Who estimated the renovation? Who was the contractor? Um, it was Vermont Integrated Architects who we worked with. So uh, they wrote the estimate? They wrote the estimate, yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. preliminary work. So yeah. the design development would get into 
uh, more detailed drawings and all of that, and then move into uh, an actual more detailed you know, cost. Yeah, more detailed cost is, estimate. Is that, that when they will uh, let us know how they're going to mitigate the uh, radon? Uh, yeah. Didn't that's she say it. that? Didn't she say that we asked her about her at that? I think thing? so. Yeah, everything up Should to this point. Should we have something in our budget in case it doesn't go through to mitigate right now? Or even look into it? Um, yes, we should. I want to also say that the reason that this sort of comes at this time as well is because there's big um, funding um, up to $500,000 for the municipal energy um, resilience program that allows for uh, weatherization, windows, um, heating systems, um some ADA compliance. ADA compliance stuff and so that regardless of the outcome we are still yeah. applying for those funds is this a historic structure or we it is a historic structure technically so there are some historic preservation grants that we could potentially utilize as well so part of this whole process is is determining you know how much we would need to bond as well as how much in grant money that we um, that that's available for a project like this. Um, Have we looked at a tear down and rebuild scenario? Um, there is yes, that's a that was a part of what BIA did. They didn't do a tear down though. They did a different building in a different location, um, and that we decided it came out to a higher cost plus. We wouldn't be able to use the MERP money because the MERP money is for existing municipalities, it's not for new municipalities. So it became more cost effective overall to do a renovation of the building and keep it here in town. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of background that you can look at in your free time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, so Sarah, my question for you was, if we're going to put that on the ballot, we don't have to decide that tonight, or do we? No, because you're going to put it on the warning. Yeah, on you're the warning. Where you have we can't even vote on the warning until after the special article deadline passes on the okay. 18th. Okay. All right, but that's something that will go. Like we we'll don't have to vote warning. to go on. If we need the warning, you can say. Okay, gotcha. That. Oh. All right. Is there any other correspondence, Sarah? Oh, well, I, see I did receive a letter today from the city of Montpelier asking if the town would be interested in joining their disaster preparedness plan. You know about this so, for the effect of the April 8th flex. Apparently, Montpelier is expected to double its population or something. Else. Oh, yes. Okay. And wow. Uh, really? All the towns need to put together in a region wide. Just wanted to know if we would like to join them preparing for this. No. I'm thinking disaster preparation. No. Let's watchers. I'm not worried about no. it. I don't but think if you are free that weekend and you want to rent out your house, this might be a good time. I think so too. A lot of people are doing that. <laughs> I think we had a total eclipse in the last like 10 years. Exactly. There was some kind of capstone that we had. We had the last the three in the <laughs> okay. Um, any other correspondence? Okay. Uh, considering rescheduling January 16th meeting to January 23rd in order to approve the warning for the March 5th. So the problem is that your last meeting, if you're going with the schedule you guys approved last time, is going to be next Tuesday. That's before you guys can vote on the warning. So I'm wondering, do you want to have two more meetings? Do you want to have a 16th and then 23rd? Or I mean, do you want to, how do you want to, how do you want to do it? Uh, considering rescheduling this, wait, wait, tell me the problem again. So you can't vote on the warning until after the special article petition did deadline, which is a week from Thursday. And that's the seventeenth. So you will you're going to meet next yes. Tuesday, according to the special schedule, and by oh. then you still won't be able to vote on the warning. So we should. So we were going to meet two weeks in a row. You were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I thought we had a reason for that. Yeah, there was because you didn't want to move the second meeting. Right. Yeah, you want to. We didn't want to meet on the second of uh, January. Right? Well, there would have been nothing to do. Yeah. So let's uh, meet on the twenty third. So what do you want to do? Do you want to? Well, you have the been... meeting or meet both. Do you mean you know it's just going to be? I don't want to meet both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, it, the logic there was we would nothing would happen before January second, but if we did it ninth and sixteenth that one week, a lot was going to happen. A lot did happen. 
I, I have one question that might throw. There's five Tuesdays in June. But no, it really isn't. So go to 23rd. That's going to. So does if you are separating, or did we make the decision just to put the interest in the budget? But then you said there was going to be a discussion about separating. Yeah. Do you need a special, not a special meeting, but okay. is, is there something? Is the budget committee? I should have asked this when you were all here. Sure. Is the budget committee going to get together, or is this going to be? It, I don't think it's going to be a five minute discussion. So, you know, how that's going to be presented and have some loose ends is what you're trying to say. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I think, I think so, the budget committee has said that, you know, we're flexible in scheduling the meetings, however, needed to be to accommodate what the select board was. Well, the reason I ask is, do we need two meetings or is one going to be sufficient to handle that portion? And I think it depends on whether or not the members of the board decide that 730 is their ending point or not. Oh, sorry, did you have a comment? I just don't, my one comment was that when we got together originally to go through this budget, we did have in mind, you know, trying to trim we took from what four, maybe yeah. five places, lines that had previous years had way more money a lot allocated to it. And that's why we chose those four or five lines. We've now here tonight added two lines that were not included in the budget we were looking at the last time. So yeah, something's gonna need to be done. Well, those were in the one, the one that I sent you guys. It just it wasn't filled in with any number. Oh. And the uh, they had a zero in that holding. That's why they're highlighted in yellow. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing of it that's not complete is, and it has no impact on what you guys do, is we don't have all the special articles in yet. So okay. that's going. That's after the approved budget. And I think that just kind of brings us back to what we were trying to do at the last meeting was to get it as low as we could see it right. without like taking 500 here and 500 there and also being conservative right. that we would end up with uh with a bunch yeah. at the end and i would say that then let's not mess with the thirty thousand dollars worth of elevator but let's let's you look at the 40 plus thousand dollars that we were looking at taking away if we're talking about right. adding six i made i just barely put those into my i put those changes in so i would envision that with those changes Dorinda would be able to recirculate that worksheet that we were uh, working from mm -hmm. with everything we've talked about here tonight. And I think that, you know, the budget committee probably wants to meet to talk about the separation of this and and try to come up with some ideas to present to the board on what that other piece looks like. You know, we've gotten to this, we've done our review, I think unless somebody feels like there's a major comeback as far as, you know, that, which I didn't get the sense from, from that, but yeah, I, I think, I think what this board needs to focus on is, is if we're going to have a, a, whether a dedicated meeting is needed for what happens there, or like you said, the amount of time that it's going to take to discuss that, can we do it in one meeting? And again, my comment is, you know the the time frames that are always on the agenda are always seem to be isolated and it's taboo to go past 7 30. so if we're going to do one meeting i think there needs to be an expectation that it's going to be a longer meeting so heads up heads up everyone i just need to let you know that the 23rd will not work for me i will actually be in vermont but i'm having a surgical procedure in hanover that day so I won't be able to attend the meeting on the 23rd. Can everyone else? Uh, we could just have like a special budget meeting on next Tuesday. I know that sounds awful, but then you can tell them that you have to do anything and just concentrate on the budget. And then by the time you get in there on the 16th, on the 23rd, you'll we'll have, you know what I mean? Yes. That seems to be the most efficient. Just concentrate completely on the budget, nothing else. Yeah. That's next Tuesday? Yeah. The 16th? Right. I'm sorry. I don't want to do it either, but. 
So we already have to be done. Have to be done. We were already <laughs> scheduled for that. Yeah. yeah and right. the twenty third, we're saying too. Yeah. And then when you get to the twenty third, okay. I see. It'll be a less of a. It'll be okay. Less. That's so fine. You can approve the warning and talk about all the other. Now things. you have three meetings in a row. And you know <laughs> you get paid more. <laughs> no, you don't. No, it doesn't. No, you don't. Don't listen to that. Now. Because we've got, you know, the the board filled at this point, we'd be able to, you know, move forward with anything that we need to if Peter's not able to attend. So all right. Well, that solved that problem, I think. But a few things on the agenda tomorrow. I have to submit that bond application tomorrow, and I still don't have um final numbers from Steve yet. Yeah, I know it. What's the telephone number here? Two two three five nine one five. Eight oh two. Yeah. Are there any other matters that come before the board? <laughs> Are we adjourning? No, no I was I was trying to push you. Yeah, are there any other matters that may come before the board? Any guests here that had anything? Anything they want to say? Alrighty. Well, we are adjourning, I'm sorry to say, an hour and five minutes past the schedule.